This slide presents the equations to design for the torsions of a pre-stressed concrete member. It is divided into two main parts, which are the shear force caused by the torsions and also the torsional reinforcement. In order to determine the shear force, we need to determine the shear flow in the member. The shear flow here can be calculated from this equation, which is equals to the torsional load divided by 2 times the effective area for torsion. This effective area of the torsion is given by this formula which is defined by the effective width and height of the sections under torsion. This figure here demonstrates how the effective areas are being determined. Let us first look into this section. This is a rectangular section. The effective area will be as highlighted here. With that, the B torsion and the height torsions are as indicated here. Let's say now you have another section. Your effective section will still be as highlighted here. The B torsion and the H torsion will still be the same. The reason being is due to the rotational twist resistance of the member. In order for a member to provide adequate rotational twist resistance, it needs to be an enclosed area where each side of the enclosed areas are providing resistance to the torsional shear stress. In this case, this additional area here is assumed to provide no contributions in resisting the torsion. The shear force can be defined by this equation also, which the torsional shear stress multiplied with the effective thickness of the walls that resisting the torsion. This torsional load later can be computed into the shear force in the functions of the shear flow times the side length. The shear force here is calculated element by element. The H torsional here is referring to the side length of the element. Taking this as an example, the H torsions for this part, it will be this H torsion. However, if we are referring to this element, the H torsion here, it will be refers to this length. Therefore, it is not to be confused that this H torsions is always referring to this. It is referring to the side length of the member. Next, we talk about the torsional reinforcement. The total required torsional reinforcement area is defined by this equation. You know that this is the equation for the shear flow, and there will be mu k as given by this equation. The mu k here is referring to the perimeter of the effective torsional area. Taking this as an example, the mu k will be this plus this plus this plus this. It is not to be confused with the effective area of the torsional area. A k is b times h while the mu k refers to the perimeter. FYD is the design yield strength of the steel bar used for as the torsional reinforcement. 
it is defined by the specified yield strength of the steel bar divided by x factor of safety 1.15 as for the angle here it is referring to the angle of compression strut with that we first need to understand the response of the beam under torsion this is a typical beam section subjected to the torsional load. The twisting moment causes the beam to rotate along its axis, which can lead to the cracking as indicated here. There is an angle of the cracking in the analysis and design of a beam and analogous truss is assumed as indicated here there will be longitudinal cords representing the reinforcement bar and the steel web is tied with the shear reinforcement bar where the stirrup can help to prevent the propagation of the crackings due to the torsional load. Also, torsional resistance can be increased if we provide longitudinal reinforcement bar along this bank. It also helps to bridge the cracks and control the further propagation of the cracks. Now back to the angle of compression struts. The analytical thrust here indicate the regions of compression strut. This is at the angle of data, which based on the understanding of a reinforced concrete member under shear load, we know that the data here cannot exceed 45 degrees. Exceeding 45 degree, we know that the sections needs to be redesigned. Therefore, we may use the angle equals to 45 degree. These are the idealized cross sections for the torsion, which indicating the arrangement of reinforcement bar. What you see here. The top and bottom reinforcement bar contributes to the torsional resistance. The side reinforcement bar also plays a significant role in preventing the cracks developed within the section. If you have hollow section something like this, you will need the torsional reinforcement bar. This rotational force will cause an equivalent shear force within the member and this shear force within each wall is defined by the shear force here therefore in order to design the torsional reinforcement this equation is adopted